Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of updates, events, and beautiful stuff happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation, and also Blender as an app. And this week we have a couple of updates that you guys will definitely want to take a look at. And of course, if you want to get started, all you need is a fresh copy of Blender 2.83 because we are going to take a look at some cosmetic updates that is now here. Meanwhile, before we actually start talking about that, the folks at Blender Foundation have also announced that currently the box print is in full gear. And we already announced this one sometime last two weeks. And currently there are 15 priority issues that they're kind of dealing with. And all of this is just to make sure that the tool is available come February 24th. And with this said, if you would like to also play with some of the updates that is available in Blender 2.92, you can simply go over to the experimental section and download Blender 2.92 right now and start playing with it. Meanwhile, Blender 2.93, the alpha, is getting, you know, it's getting up to speed. It's getting a couple of things. You can also notice that the file size is getting a little bit higher. And of course, we hope that most of the things that we're going to take a look at today will be making it to the final release of Blender 2.93. So with Blender 2.93 simply opened here, the first thing which you would notice is there are certain cosmetic things that is going on, all right? First things first is right over here, you would notice we have the viewpoint tool. Now with the viewpoint tool in previous versions of Blender, if I simply pop here, you know, Blender 2.92, the beta, if you notice, there's actually something that looks slightly different with both of them. Right now, if you hover around this part, it points out to the negative direction. So you can notice negative Y, negative X and Z. Contrary to what you have in Blender 2.92 and you know previous versions, this is something that is not there. Another thing which you'd also notice is if you hover around this, the letters actually light up. Contrary to this, that the whole thing lights up, this one sort of lights up and uh, I guess it makes a lot of sense. So last week we talked about something and what we talked about the last time was that if you go over to your modifiers that right now if you go through and click on your modifiers you can make multiple copies and you can you know transfer these things right and this week we are also seeing that some updates is coming to the modifiers something else which we talked about a lot previous week was if you go in there and you select something like the collision and you go over to you know your physics section you can turn off the collision temporarily and you can turn it on and this is also pretty cool but today we're seeing that something else is happening so if you go over to subdivision right now and you turn on the subdivision and go over to advanced you would now notice that we have way more options within the uv smoothing now most of you guys would probably be like ah uh, what is the use for this okay is more for those who like to create their models in low poly texture them in low poly and probably add subdivisions to these things later in time or probably you're bringing in a model from somewhere else and it has all of those textures that you need but it was done in a low poly and you want to retain the low poly but then subdivide the mesh so this is a uh, this is very nice so if you click down here you notice we have a couple more options like keep corners junctions and concave keep corners and junctions contrary to what we have in previous versions which simply has to do with about three or four so let's take a look and go over to advance down here within the uv smooth you notice we have none keep corners and all so how does this influence what you're working on? So if we simply click right here and go over to the UV, you'll notice that we have this UV right here. So if I press the tab key, you'll see how the UV is. So it's very interesting to see that they've made the keep boundaries as the default. So how this one works is like so. So by default, so let's pop back into Blender 2.92. So by default, I'll drag this one right over here, switch this to UV. So by default, all you do is once you have this the way it is, and let's press the tab key so you could see what we have. Once you apply a subdivision and then you press the tab key, you notice it distorts the entire thing. And this is definitely going to force you to go ahead and start selecting individual parts like so, and then start scaling these things to match. What about if you have a complex mesh? Now this is going to be a big problem. So what you need to do now is with 2.93, you don't necessarily need to go through all of that hassle as what you have here is still the same thing that you're going to get. So I can click right here now and hit on apply 
And if I press the tab key, you'd notice it only subdivides the UV, but then it doesn't distort it. And this is also something that is very, very, you know, it's going to come in very, very handy for a lot of people. On the other hand, the folks at Blender Foundation have also improved how your selection of the faces would look like. So for those who like to select faces, it's now even easier and better for you to select these faces. And you know, there's a couple of updates, I'm going to put a link in the description where you guys can read this one up. And while we're talking about things that you can select and things that you can play with, there is also a pretty cool update that is now available with the geometry node. So we talked about the geometry node, did an entire video about it. I'm going to put a link in the description for you guys. And there is a pretty cool update that is now here and it's called a sample texture. So with the sample texture, you can simply throw things around and these things are done based off textures. So depending on how you would like to scatter things, you can load in a texture and you can use that texture to drive several stuff. Now, for those who are looking at ways to create some sort of motion graphic style things, this is definitely going to come in extremely extremely handy so we've covered about two different videos about how you can work with this within the past few days so just in case you're excited about it you want to play with textures you want to control stuff with textures or probably you are looking for ways that you can improve how you can work or how you can take advantage of the geometry nodes within your next project then simply take a look at those videos and while we're talking about things that can get you up to speed the folks at blender foundation have also made a very cool update so i'm just gonna go ahead Ahead and let's get that grease pencil right there so the last time we talked about the grease pencil we did say that the grease pencil has a couple of cool tricks up its sleeves in terms of things that you can do with it so what we looked at was if you create a simple spline like this and you go over to your modifiers that right now there is a very cool stuff that you can do with a noise modifier and that had to do with the offset and we looked at how this can help you create some very nice and very clean looking stuff and some time ago we also talked about the fact that the grease pencil tools have now been coming really hot in blender so we talked about the fact that they had the new box transform which can help you transform stuff so depending on what you're working on you can now easily transform these things and you can press the spacebar to commit or you can convert any of the crooked lines or curved lines that you've made within the grease pencil to become a straight stroke so what we said is once you select any of these things or you draw any of them you can now click on this button by simply using the grease pencil tools and it will convert it to become a straight stroke and this is having all of this jitter just because we we have the noise modifier turned on so if we turn this off you see we have a straight stroke and if you turn this back on we can do that noise kind of thing so this is going to be very useful for those who like to do electricity and stuff like that but then there is more so the more stuff that you have now is if you actually go over to edit and go over to preference so let's take a look at this you need to type in the word grease pencil all right so if you have the grease pencil tool loaded in what happens is down here so let me just simply drag this all the way down so down here you would notice that we now have a couple of extra set of tools and that has to do with the timeline scrub so about a week ago we talked about the timeline scrub we talked about the fact that that was pretty cool we also looked at the fact that this might make sense if it exists in blender and yes it does so how do you work with this so let's take for example that you're working within your grease pencil and you would like to move from one frame to another frame and let's say you do something like that go over to another frame and do this traveling from here back to this place might be you know it might not really be like the best thing for you to do most of the time and that is why the timeline scrub is coming in handy so how you access this right now is if you hold down alt on your keyboard with your middle mouse you can now move back and forth and you can go over to the frame that you want you can make some adjustments and you can hold down alt with your middle mouse go over to the next frame make some adjustments all right and you can hold down you know alt and the middle mouse and do that so this way you can go across all of the frames that you want to work on and get things done really really fast and the beautiful thing is despite the fact that this works at any point so you can actually be within a point like this hold down alt and get this active this on the other hand works every single place so let's say for example we switch over to the 3d view all right so let's say we switch over to the 3d view right now at any point in time i hold down alt 
I have this active. If we also switch over and get to, you know, the compositor, the video sequencer, whatever, this also works. So if we go over to where we have the video editing and go to the video editor, hold down alt with the middle mouse, you can also notice that this comes in really, really hot and it works pretty fine. So these are some very cool cosmetic improvements that is now available in Blender 2.93. And for those who are looking for updates for the sculpting thing, right now pablo has not yet implemented most of the things that we've wanted to see okay so some of the things that you're looking for you probably will not be able to see them but then let me show you guys how you can get some tools that you probably love and you would want to play with right here so if you go over to edit and go over to preference for those looking for the experimental tools go over to interface you need to make sure that you have the developer extras turned on and that way you can take a look at the experimentals now within the experimentals just in case you don't have the asset browser you need to turn that on there and at the same time if you want to see some of the updates and things available that is still within the experimental stage you can now turn these ones on so like right now the scope vectors is right there the mode for tilting is also there so that simply means that you can still have access to this thing select the object that you want to play with go over to the sculpt mode and there you can start doing some stuff so things that are pretty basic like vertex coloring right now you don't see that so let's go right here set this you know things like vertex coloring and also some things like masking by color color filter and also smearing so for those who are looking for ways to gain access to this right now you can actually take a look at this and start using this for your next project so real quick let's talk about something that is up with the video editor so we've not been seeing so much of an update within the video editor although we've already talked about some of the updates that have been here and last time which we talked about this we said that the up one of the cool updates that we saw deals with the transform the cropping and we've looked at some of these things all right so we talked about the fact that you can now easily crop and you can also play with the positioning but then there is a very tiny update that is available it's more like a cosmetic update as well so if you click on the add object you go over to the edit strip there is an update to the edit strips adjustment layers that you can work with so if I throw in something like the transform right here within the compositing, there is now a blending mode. Blending mode actually helps you, you know, play with opacity. So this is something that you can animate. So probably if you want to play with the position of the object, because this is what is actually controlling what is going on there. At any point in time, you delete that, you notice it's just a simple adjustment node or a simple adjustment layer. So it doesn't really affect the original object. So if you want to throw in an adjustment layer in terms of effect strips, you can now do that. So I can drop that one right there and I can do some very nice compositing. So we can play with opacity and this is just affecting this and you can also play with the blending mode. And this is actually one of the new features that is available or should I say it's one of the new, you know, updates that is now available to the video editor. So with that said, let's take a look at some of the nice community add-ons that will be coming in very, very soon. This is due to the fact that their teasers are out there and it just simply makes sense to pay homage to this because they look really nice and they'll probably make your day. So first off, we're going to start by talking about the folks at Blender Now. The folks at Blender Now, creators of transportation, they've just gone ahead to tease their brand new vegetation add-on which looks extremely cool. Now this add-on from the teaser, we can tell that it's going to support animation for those who like to have animated trees. And on the other hand, we can also see that there are days, you know, or should I say seasonal periods that you can tweak this to be. And it looks pretty nice. It's quite refreshing to see that there are add-ons like this and, you know, it just makes it easier for those who like to create very beautiful landscape and also nice vegetations to get things up and running with this. Meanwhile, the folks at Home Gen 3D are teasing a very nice glimpse of what they consider as the human generator. Now, the human generator is going to be coming within the first quarter of 2021. So sometime within February, March, we might be seeing something like this. And they've also advised that if you would like to get 10% off, when this tool is out that you can simply go over to the link in the description and take a look at it and also apply for that so i'm going to put this link in the description so that you guys will be able to see it so what is this tool and how does it work i mean from teasers that we've seen what you can do is you can actually generate humans i don't know if this is going to be animated as it is right here or you know if this is more like just a teaser thing but from what we can see with all of the dials that is here and things that it can push back and forth, you can create things like faces, you can randomize them, and you can play with eyes, play with the skull, and also play with the body weight and the entire character. Now, I also got to notice that we only have like male figures. I don't know if there's going to be female figures later in time. And this was not also t 
teased within the video so hopefully we might be seeing more of these things and since they promise that this is going to be coming within the first quarter of the year hopefully all of this is going to be available so that once they come out you guys will be the first to know and while we're talking about things that you guys are going to be the first to know the folks at polygonic are also doing a 30 percent off so i did reach out to you guys sometime within the week as well and we talked about the brand new update that is now available to their traffic add-on and right now they are also giving out a 30 percent off for anyone who wants to get botanic or traffic so 30 percent off use the coupon code ask nk30 to get that happening for you and that's definitely going to be about it lots of cool stuff available lots of you know discounts and nice updates right here tell me what you guys think about these in the comment section and of course for those who like to get access to all of these things that we've talked about link is going to be in the description for those who like to support me on patreon and if you like to hit me on discord link to that is also going to be in the description so do well to check that out and that's about it and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace